Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with number 15 in the series We're standing on the shoulders of giants from Rui Lopez to Magnus Carlsen Which is a series on the strongest players of their era Not just the 16 official and undisputed world champions But the strongest players of any era in the history of chess It started with Rui Lopez de Segura, yes that's where the Spanish opening got the name from who was the strongest player between 1560 and 1575. He was followed up by Leonardo da Cutri and then Paolo Boy, Alessandro Selvio and Giacchino Greco. In those years the power of chess was in Spain and Italy. Then it moved to France where Legal de Carmeur was the strongest player of his era between 1730 and 1755. He was followed up by François André Danécan Philidor, Alexandre de Chapelle, and Louis Charles Maé de la Bourdonnais. That is a beautiful name. Then the power of chess moved to England with Howard Staunton and then to Germany. Adolf Anderson was the strongest player of his era in two separate time frames. In between, it was the great pride and sorrow of chess, Paul Morphy from the USA. Then we have the 16 official world champions, Willem Steinitz, Emmanuel Lasker, José Raúl Capablanca, Alexander Aljechin, Max Euwe, Michael Botvinnik. That one is in red because this video is about Botvinnik. If you want to see the earlier videos in this series, I put a link up here and you can see videos on all the names I just mentioned. Botvinnik was followed by Vasily Smyslov, then Misha Tal. Petrosian, Spassky, the great Bobby Fischer, Anatoly Karpov, Gary Kasparov, Vladimir Kramnik, Vishwanathan Anand, and the current world champion Magnus Carlsen, who has been world champion since 2013. As mentioned, this video is about Mikhail Botwinnik, the patriarch of Soviet chess. Botwinnik was born on August 17, 1911, in what was then Kuokala in Finland. And now it is the district of Repino in St. Petersburg. His parents were Russian Jews. His father, Moise Botvinnik, born in 1878, died in 1931, was a dental technician. And his mother, Serafima Rabinovich, was a dentist. Botvinnik later recounted, I was asked once, what do you consider yourself to be from the point of view of nationality? My reply was, said Botvinnik, my position is complicated. I'm a Jew by blood, a Russian by culture, and a Soviet by upbringing. On his religious views, he called himself an atheist. In 1920, his mother became ill and his father left the family, but maintained contact with the children even after his second marriage to a Russian woman. At about the same time, Botvinnik started reading newspapers and became a committed communist. In autumn 1923, at the age of 12, a big thing happened in Botvinnik's life. He was taught chess by a school friend of his older brother, using a homemade set, and he instantly fell in love with the game. In the winter of 1924, Botvinnik won his school's championship and exaggerated his age by three years in order to become a member of the Petrograd Chess Assembly. When Botvinnik finished the school curriculum, he was below the minimum age for entrance examinations for higher education and while waiting he qualified for his first USSR championship final stage in 1927 as the youngest player ever at that time. He tied for fifth and sixth place and gained the title of master in that championship and in 1931 at the age of 20 Botwinnik won his first Soviet championships in Moscow scoring 13 and a half points out of 17 games. He won the Soviet championship six times in total in his life. In late summer 1931, Botvinnik graduated from Leningrad University Mathematics Departments with a degree in Electrical Engineering. In 1935, Botvinnik married Gayana Davidovna Ananova, who was the daughter of his algebra and ge geometry teacher. They had one daughter named Olga. In his first tournament outside the USSR, the Hastings 1934-1935 tournament, Botvinnik achieved only a tie for 5th and 6th place with 5 points out of 9 games. He wrote that in London after the tournament, Emmanuel Lasker said his arrival only 2 hours before the first round began was a serious mistake and that it should have allowed 10 days for acclimatization. 
But Winnick wrote that he did not make this mistake again. But Winnick won Nottingham 1936, together with Capablanca, the first tournament victory by a Soviet master outside his own country. In June 1941, Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union and Botvinnik's wife Gajane, a ballerina, told him that her colleagues at the Kirov Opera and Ballet Theatre were being evacu evacuated to the city of Perm. The family found an apartment there and Botvinnik obtained a job with the local electricity supply organization at the lowest pay rate. Because of his strong results during and just after World War II, Botvinnik was one of five players to contest the 1948 World Chess Championship, which was held at The Hague in the Netherlands and in Moscow. And the tournament was necessary because world champion Aljechin had died in 1946. Botvinnik won the 1948 tournament convincingly with a score of 14 points out of 20 games, becoming the sixth world champion. While he was on vacation in Riga, after the tournament, an 11-year-old boy called Misha Tal paid a visit, hoping to play a game against a new champion. Tal was met by Botvinnik's wife, who said the champion was asleep and that she had made him take a rest from chess. Botvinnik held the world title with two brief interruptions for the next 15 years, during which he played seven world championship matches against Bronstein, three matches against Smyslov and two matches against Stahl and finally against Petrosian. After losing the world title to Tigran Petrosian, Botvinnik withdrew from the following world championship cycle after FIDE, the world chess organization, declined to grant a losing champion the automatic right to a rematch. Botvinnik retired from competitive play in 1970, aged 59, preferring instead to occupy himself with the development of computer chess programs and to assist with the training of younger Soviet players, earning him the nickname of Patriarch of the Soviet Chess School. One of his students was Gary Kasparov. Botvinnik died of pancreatic cancer in May 1995. According to his daughter Olga, Botvinnik remained active until the last few months of his life and continued to go to work for his economic computer project until March 1995, which was two months prior to his death, despite blindness in one of his eyes and extremely poor vision in the other. That was some background on the great man and of course we have to look at a game from Botvinnik. He played with the Black Pieces against Paul Keres on the 26th of March 1941 in the USSR Soviet Union Championship. It was round three and Keres opened with a deep on. Botvinnik played knight f6. This game was played seven years before Botvinnik would become the sixth world champion. c4, e6, knight c3 and the Nimzo Indian is played by Botvinnik. Queen c2, d5, c takes d5, and you can recapture with the queen. You can also recapture with the knight, even though that is less common in the game. Botvinnik recaptured with the pawn, the most common move. Bishop g5, pinning the knight, h6, and taking on f6 is very common. And then queen takes, and a3 will be played. But in the game, after h6, Kiras retreated the bishop to h4 c5 from Botvinnik and you can take that pawn. You can also play knight f3. In the game Keras played an unusual move. He castled queenside. It has been played before at a high level but it is not very common. Botvinnik took on c3 immediately eliminating a defender of white's king. The main theme in this game is white's lack of development as we'll see. Keras recaptured with the queen and g5 on pinning the knight on f6 and attacking the bishop. Bishop back to g3, c takes d4, queen takes d4 and knight c6, developing a piece with tempo on the queen. The queen has to play, went to a4 and bishop f5, another developing move. White has to hurry up, all these pieces are still at home. He played e3 to get the bishop out. Rook c8. We have played 13 moves and White's position already looks very uncomfortable. His king side is undeveloped and his king is in the firing line of rook c8. 
and it cannot even slide over to b1 because of that bishop on f5. Kira has played bishop d3 and this logical looking move developing a piece countering the strong bishop on f5 and giving the king the b1 square is in fact a big mistake. And Bodwinnik found the strongest continuation. He played queen d7 protecting the bishop. The king went to safety. Bishop takes check. Rook takes and now the queen showed up on f5 attacking the rook. If you play a move like queen b3 to protect your rook there is knight b4. Winning a lot of material, not just an exchange, as that knight cannot be taken. It's of course attacking the rook twice. The rook is pinned, so you cannot move the rook to safety. But also, as, as mentioned, you cannot take the knight, because then queen takes check, king a1, and rook c1 is already checkmate. So what to do after queen f5? A move like queen b3 does not work, as we just saw. But his rook is hanging and it is pinned. e4 seems a logical move and it was played by Keres. Knight takes e4 and now king a1. White has avoided an immediate disaster at the cost of a pawn. How does black now continue? Knight c5 looks like a very strong move. It is forking queen and rook. But this does not win more material as white has a check to unfork his pieces. He gives check with rook e3, king d8, and then he can bring the queen to safety. And white is still standing. Much stronger after king a1 instead of knight c5 is castling. Taking the king out of the center. And now knight c5 is a threat. Keras played rook d1, getting the rook out of trouble and protecting the bottom rank. A developing move like knight f3 instead would not have worked because of either knight takes g3 and both rooks are hanging or knight c5 as we saw with that fork on two heavy pieces. So rook d1 seemed to make sense and was played in the game and now look at this move b7 b5 but Winnick finds the strongest move very powerful play from the future world champion. It's giving back the pawn and Keras took it but now there is knight d4 and this knight will prove to be the hero of the game. Black gave up the pawn on b5 to make this move with tempo on the queen and just look at the difference between the minor pieces. Why does a knight on its initial square and a bishop shooting into thin air while black has two monsters of knights in the center of the board. White's queen is hanging and Kira has played the queen to d3. There already was no better move but this does not work. Knight c2 is check and was played by Bodwinnik. King b1 is really the only move and now knight to b4. And here after 22 move Kiras actually resigned because he's totally busted. Let's understand his resignation. For starters the queen is attacked. If we slide over the queen to b3 for example just to give one example variation then there is knight d2 check it is a double check. Both the queen and the knight give check to the king. The only way to get out of double check is by move the king. And you can only move to a1. And then your queen is lost. a takes b3. And you also will get checkmated after rook c6. That rook will come over to a6. And black will checkmate the white king. Another option after knight b4. The last move from the game is to play the queen to b5 for example. But then you get checkmated on the spot with knight d2 check, that same move, it is double check. You have to go to a1 and then the knight will deliver checkmate on c2. That is a beautiful knight, it went from c6 to d4 to c2 to b4 and then back to c2 to deliver checkmate. And white's kingside pieces are still looking on from afar. A great example of the power of the Nimzo Indian in the hands of one of the greatest players of all time. The white king side is a sorry side with rook and knight on their initial squares looking on as their king gets massacred. Great game from the sixth world champion Michael Mozejevic Bodwinik. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you liked this video. If you did please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you liked the video it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. 
This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.